So let's um, see how we're going to introduce UI into the matching model. So first of all, we'll um, simplify a bit the setup compared to what we've been doing all along. Um, instead of com com uh, looking at a you know, dynamic matching model with just a continuous time, here we're going to think about uh, just a one period model. Okay, so you'll have initially everybody will be unemployed, firms will post vacancy, and then firms and workers are going to match. You'll have some production, you'll have consumption, and then that'll be the end of the world. Okay? And this is just to simplify because if in a dynamic setup, um, you'll see workers would have to think about how workers save their income, and then everything becomes uh, much more complicated. So here we, we don't want to think about all these complex issues. So we're going to um, simplify by thinking uh, by having a one period model. Okay, um, and so uh, we'll have uh, so we'll have all workers. Unlike you know our model where is a quantity you know you of workers that are um, unemployed. Here, all workers will be initially unemployed. So compared to what you know, what we've um, what we've done earlier, so that's a little bit different. Um, we we'll assume that the size of the labor force is just one. That's so that we don't have to worry about uh, that extra parameter. What we've called H so far is just equal to one. So the number of you know, the mass of workers that's initially unemployed is just uh, one. Okay. Um, now what, what's going to be key here uh, is that we allow workers to search with different um, search efforts and they'll choose that search effort to maximize their utility. Okay, um, so we we'll assume that unemployed worker search with some effort E. Okay, and um, so why do we do that? You know, before we didn't have that, so before it was as if. Um, the search effort was just one for everybody. Why do we introduce that? Well, it's because um, one of the most well-documented effects of uh, UI on workers is that when you increase the generosity of UI, workers tend to search less, which tend to increase unemployment. And that this effect uh, is very well uh, is very well documented, and so if we want to capture what what UI does on the labor market, and, and then later on if we want to think about designing a good UI policy, we have to take that effect into account. And think about it: if you, unemployment insurance replaces your wage 100 percent, if it was um, full generosity of unemployment insurance, it means that when you lose your job, you just you are still paid the same forever. Then nobody, you know, once you become an employee, why would you work? You, know, you would just go on with your life and do stuff you want without having to work. So obviously, it's clear that if you reach a generosity of 100%, people would never search for work. You know, like search effort would be zero. That's very clear. And it's also very clear that if there was no UI, so that when people lose their jobs, they have no income, you know, and they just very quickly, you know, and if you don't have much selling, people are just starving. And clearly, people will search with immense effort to try to get a job. So it's very clear, you know, by looking at these extreme cases, that if there was no UI, there would be very strong job search. If there was fully generous UI, there would be no job search at all. And in fact, you know, in practice, UI is somewhere in between. But we do see that when UI becomes, although it's not such an extreme change, we do see that when UI becomes more generous, people tend to search a bit less, and as a result, 
they take more time to find a job. That's something that's well documented. So if we want to have a thorough representation of the effect of UI, we've got to introduce um, search effort. And we'll see, we, we, you know, we'll see how UI affects that, that search effort. Okay? Um, so our number of workers are going to search with uh, search effort E. So now, if uh, if we have um, you know mass one of workers in the labor force are all unemployed, they search with effort E. What we learned from these three assumptions is that uh, the aggregate search effort, which at the end of the day will be the argument that enters the matching function which is number of unemployed workers times uh, effort um, per worker, that's going to be equal to E times 1. 1 is the size of the labor force, but everybody in the labor force starts unemployed. So that's going to be equal to E, the aggregate search effort. Uh, okay? so, E will be one argument in our matching function. And then, you know, we're also going to assume as before that, um, you know, you have just a, a bunch of firms in the labor market. Um, and in fact, you know, we can say that there's a, a, a mass uh, one of uh, firms and third, they are going to post um, B vacancies to um, recruit workers. Okay? Um, and then the, when, once we have that, the rest of the labor market is kind of as usual. Um, so there is a matching function that gives the number of matches on the labor market. The matching function has the same pro pro property as before. It has a constant return to scale, it's increasing in both arguments, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the matching function gives number of workers firm uh, matches in, in that one period when worker and firms uh, get together. And um, so that matching function is just going to be uh, M of E, the aggregate search effort, and V. Okay, uh, and then what's the labor market tightness here? Well, labor market tightness is always you know, the ratio of these two arguments in the matching function. So here, one argument is number of vacancies V, the other argument is E, the uh, aggregate search effort. So here's the labor market tightness. Is, um, theta is V over okay. because everybody starts uh, unemployed. Okay, and then once we have this tightness, you know, everything is the same as what we see in the standard model. So, um, and in fact, when we studied job rationing, we also had a model with job search effort, uh, which there was exogenous, it was a parameter. Um, but now here it's going to become endogenous, but nevertheless, everything is going to be the same. So as we saw with job rationing, the probability um, to fill a vacancy you know, is going to be, as usual, Q of theta. Uh, and we know that Q, you know, Q of theta is a decreasing function of tightness. Then we have the probability Uh, to find a job um, per unit of effort 
that's going to be f of theta. Of course, f of theta is inclusive in theta, and therefore the probability to find a job with f of e is e times f of theta. So this is slightly different in the basic model in which E is such a force just one, so E is one, so it disappears. But it's exactly the same as what we saw when we um, studied, you know, we were trying to study the limit of the matching model without when the when, um, job search effort goes to infinity, when people are really desperate to find a job. And in that case, we had introduced that job search effort, and so we find a probability to find a job of E times F of theta. Uh, okay? Uh, so this is, so basically, you know, it's just like a slightly modified version of what we've seen so far with a new variable, job search effort, and we just assume it's just a one-curl model where everybody starts uh, unemployed.